Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at scene states within Twin Motion 2020.2. It's kind of one of the newer features that we have that came with the update to the phasing. And before we get into it, if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It, it tells me that you have learned something, that you like the video and all that. Also, consider subscribing. There are a lot of people who haven't, and I know a lot have not. So let's get into it now. We're going to look at scene states within twin motion. Now, what are scene states? They are, in a way, it's kind of like layers. If you've worked in SketchUp, it's in Rhino. It, they function similar. You can put, it's all kind of all about visibility. What do I want to have on what particular layer or what particular scene state so I can either change what I'm showing at particular times throughout a video or throughout phasing or whatever it might be. And where do we find that? Because it's not actually something that's seen on the screen or really we don't have access to it necessarily out of the box as we don't really see it. Where is it? So over here at the bottom, you can see we by default, we see statistics. And if I click this button, I can raise up the st statistics and I can see all the statistics I have for this particular model. But under this drop down, I have BIM information, transform information, if you want to get really precise on transforming an object. And then finally, we've got scene states here at the top. And if I click scene states, I can see I've got a few here. I've got a couple that came in with my imported models that I'm going to just ignore. They don't really have anything to do with what I'm trying to show here. But I've got I've made a couple already. One is called all which kind of infers showing everything or doing something with everything in my model. And another is no vegetation. So these are, at least the way I've set it up, all is showing everything and no vegetation is, you know, turning the vegetation off. That's simple enough. And we can start to do some things with this, these scene states to not only organize what we see, but also organize videos and phasing. I'm going to make a couple more scene states so we could see how this starts to work. So if I just click on all, you know, nothing changes because I already see everything. And if I click on no vegetation, you notice that all the trees in the background are now gone. And we could see that directly up here at the top where I have vegetation, a folder for all my vegetation, trees, painted vegetation, everything. It's just turned off. And so that's all these scene states are doing. They're controlling the visibility of all the objects you have in your scene up above here. And it, you know, it makes sense. It's just a scene state, the state in which you are, your scene is in visibility wise. And as soon as I click back all, you can see that that eye is now open. I see all the vegetation once again. So I'm again, I'm now going to come to the bottom here and there's a, a plus that says add new scene state. And as soon as I do that, I can see I have this new state here. And I want to actually rename this. So with the three dots here, you can control where they are and whether you want to delete it, rename it, whatever. I'm just going to rename this. And let's just, let's call this blank. And so we're going to go all the way back to the starting ground. And so I, it's a matter of controlling visibility, of course, but I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to select everything except my starting ground and then just hide it. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. It's easy enough. My, I've actually made my starting ground uh, this water material. And the the way that you, you know, in a sense, set or apply the visibility information that you have in your scene graph to the scene state is by simply hitting this refresh button. And as soon as I do that, nothing happens, unfortunately. But now the blank is only including my starting ground. The scene state blank is only including my starting ground. Okay. And we can test that by simply clicking on, for example, no vegetation or all of another scene state and seeing what happens. So as soon as I click on no vegetation, everything comes back, but with no vegetation, it's perfect. And if I click on all from here, I get all my trees back. And then again, clicking on blank hides everything and I'm back to my starting ground and that's it. So this is a good way of organizing visibility wise what you want to see in your project. Maybe you're working on something very specific. And while we can always come up here at the top, right click and then isolate something, a particular element, we can always do that. This is a, 
a higher order of controlling visibility. It's really like it is truly is layers and it's it's more useful than layers and other programs that you might be familiar with because we have more control with these other than just turning them on and off. Now, before I get into like videos and phasing, these checkboxes, I can't find a reason why they do what they do. Honestly, if I uncheck them or not, then they, they it all functions the same. Just clicking on the scene state allows you to change your scene state. And I can't necessarily say why the checkboxes are there or if they need to be there. But when I uncheck them all, nothing seems to happen. I can still switch between them. So once I click all, all the trees come up. And once I click no vegetation, the trees go away. So, you know, if you're, if you have an answer to why these checkboxes seem to do nothing or really what they're supposed to be doing, leave that in the comment section below. I'm very curious. And that maybe is something that they haven't worked out yet, or just something that's in there by default that doesn't really do anything. I don't know. Hard to believe that's the case, but I'm curious. So we have these, these different scene states. And maybe we, what we want to do now is uh, go into a video or a phasing and work with these scene states throughout that process. So let's go to a video that'll probably be more impactful. I'll go to video. I will create video. And let's go ahead and move to a different location. I'll move down here. And we're just going to start at, with the blank. We want We want to start with nothing. And then as I zoom out or something like that, we get everything to show up and then finally we can get all the trees to show up. And again, you can organize these scene states however you want. I have this model split up by material just, just because that seemed to be easier at the time. If you want to essentially build a building throughout the course of an animation, you can simply do that through scene states and that'd be really easy because you have, maybe you want have different materials or different aspects of the building in different scene states. So as you progress through the video, you can turn those on progressively and see the building being built in a sense. So I have this set up here. I'm going to hit click refresh to update my location. I'm going to go into more and then camera and the camera on the right side here, which you can't see under my face is actually scene state. And I'm going to click on scene state. And then here we go. We can see all of our scene states. And so right now, the scene state for this particular point in the video is set to none, which means it's not looking at a scene state. That's fine. But when I change none to blank, now we can see this in action. It's working. So this the camera for this point in the video is now looking at the scene state blank. And I have to refresh this once again. Once I refresh that, we're good to go. I'm going to add a second frame here. I'm going to go ahead and move to this location, maybe over here. And then I'll update that location. But now again, I want to click more camera scene state and then change this scene state to, let's say, no vegetation. And so once no vegetation, the scene state no vegetation populates into this video, we'll see our whole building, but with no vegetation. So there we go. And I'm going to go back again and make sure I refresh this frame. So I have this updated. Once I refresh that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new frame. I'm going to move over to this location so we can get an idea of some of the trees that are showing up. Maybe over here. That works. I'll go ahead and up, update this so we can see the location for the camera update there. Now I need to go once again to more camera scene state. I'm going to change that scene state to all because we want to see everything. So there are my trees. That's great. But before I get out of this, okay, I'll go ahead and refresh this so we can see that the trees populate in the background. But I'm going to go back to this first frame. And just like we updated the camera with the scene state, you know, I can also update the weather and have this change throughout the scene states. So let's say, the, you know, the weather is pretty clear, but I want to change the time of day anything like that. So maybe this is more of a morning shot, something like that. I can go back and then refresh this again. And then I can come back to my final frame. And maybe I want my final frame to go throughout the day, I can go ahead and change that time of day to later in the day as opposed to early. So we can come back here to more. 
Maybe we want to make this a little more cloudy weather, put, add a little clouds to the scene there. Not quite to the point where we have rain or water, but then we do want to change the time of day with the location. And maybe this is a bit later into the day where it's almost dusk. That looks good. Because again, we need to update this frame. And then now we can play this from the starting point and see what we get. So we can see the time of day changes. We're going towards that midday here in the center. The video is going to lag for a second because of the amount of information that's showing up, but rest assured that as soon as this point enters the frame, we're going to see everything. And then again, as it gets to this point there, we can see that all of our trees show up and we get our sunset looking shot. So that's a great way to use scene states within, you know, just an organization purpose throughout modeling within twin motion, but also within creating a video and adding different keyframes that have to do with each state. And so in a sense, you're either building the building, you're changing the weather, anything like that can apply as well. And then finally, let's look at phasing. Phasing changed within twin motion 2020.2 20, in a sense that now we can start to integrate some of these scene states and, and it also made phasing just a lot easier. And I'm going to save that for a future video, but I'll go ahead and create a phase here. And so if we look at phase one, and you know, it doesn't matter where we go here, we could see that you know this is what phase one looks like. Maybe what I want to do is actually put phase one to be blank because you know that it makes sense that phase one might be blank. So you can see as soon as I click on blank that this phase now changes to blank. But once I start to drag the date and change the date, you'll also notice that again, I'm back to seeing you know, like no vegetation scene state as opposed to the blank, which I have set to phase one. And that's because whenever I created this first phase, it was based on the state I was currently in, which happened to be not the blank scene state that I wanted. So I can just come in here and delete this. And I'm going to set my scene state to blank right there. And then now I'm going to hit create phase. And so as, as soon as I do that, you can see as I scrub throughout this phase that I still am within the scene state blank. And so maybe I can come over here to, you know, later in November or, or really just the end of phase one, which kind of makes sense that I would have phase two start at the end of phase one, but really anywhere. And I can click on no vegetation. And so this isn't actually applying or creating a new phase yet, but I'm setting my scene state to no vegetation then I can create a phase that's going to take on that scene state. So right now I have the no vegetation scene state on, I can hit create phase. And now this phase is completely with no vegetation. I have that scene state within this phase. And that is exactly what I would want in this case. And so I can even drag this back to meet phase one because you know that makes sense also. I can drag this down if I want to better organize this or something like that. And then finally, I can scrub to the end here. And I, again, I have blank. There's nothing going on. It's not even the blank scene state. It's just nothing. But I want to click all because I want to turn everything on. I want to make I want to have the trees there and everything. And so we can see the progression from phase one to two to three. And once I have this entire scene loaded, I can then create a third phase. And once I do that, I can then see that I have a progression between one, two, and three. And so clicking create phase now creates phase three. I can drag this back to meet phase two, maybe drop this down for better organization. And now I can scrub between phase one, two, and three and see the difference between, you know, for example, the tree showing up or not, or having no model whatsoever, and then dragging back to phase two and seeing the model repopulate. It's just, it's really great. And so I, I love scene states. It is a great way of organizing your model, you know, just as you model through twin motion, but also to organize videos and phasing. Like it's really nice that you can do more with them other than just organize your model. Of course, it's great for that too. So that's going to do it for this video. If you happen to learn something, which I hope you did, please demolish that like button. Scene states are really great. Let me know what you think about them. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so much. And I can't thank you all who have. It really means a lot. 
I sure hope to see you in the next Twin Motion video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.